If you've spent any time in the great outdoors, particularly in wet and rainy weather, then you'll know that it's a widely accepted good piece of advice to waterproof all of your kit. But is that such good advice? I saw a video recently in one of the Facebook groups that I'm a member on. In fact, I think the video was posted to several groups. And in that group, a guy was showing all the kit that he takes out with him and every single piece of kit about what he was wearing or carrying on him was individually waterproofed. Now, <laughs> it's fair to say it got, it got some constructive feedback in the comments from people. Some people were more constructive than others, as is the case on Facebook. Um, but I withheld saying anything. So I thought to myself, actually, the, the, the wide advice that you kind of hear is waterproof all of your gear. So this guy, and I got a sense he was sort of just starting out in the great outdoors, had done that. He'd followed the widely accepted advice of waterproof all of your kit. So to be fair, he was, he was kind of just following the good advice. I thought to myself, rather than comment on the post, why don't I do something more constructive and actually put a video together that explains the way that I approach waterproofing my kit, what I waterproof, what I don't waterproof, and what my overarching philosophy is as to whether I waterproof it or don't waterproof it. So if you're interested in, in seeing what that is, then keep watching. As you can see, I've got my kit here that I generally take out for a day out in the woods. I'd add a little bit more to this if I was going out for an overnighter. But it's irrelevant really what's in this day sack because it's the principle and the, this ethos that I approach, that, that I utilise, that determines what I do and don't waterproof. So it doesn't really matter what I'm showing you in this video today. It's more the principle that I want you to take away. So broadly speaking, my overarching theory and, and ethos as to what is waterproofed and what isn't is this. If the kit or equipment can absorb water and or it becomes less effective or damaged if it does absorb water, then I waterproof it. If the kit or equipment that I'm carrying does not absorb water and or does not become damaged or less effective if it absorbs water, then it doesn't get waterproofed. And I approach and have approached my kit packing and that I've approached that, uh, applied that philosophy for decades now and it's done me well. So rather than just talk about the theory of this approach, why don't I show you some of the things that I'm carrying today that are waterproofed and why, and that aren't waterproofed and why, and we'll talk about how I've approached, how I've applied that philosophy that I've just spoken about. Let's take a look firstly at the kit and equipment that's in here that is not waterproofed. And remember, the reason it's not waterproof is because I believe it doesn't absorb water and or if it does, it doesn't become damaged or less effective. So let's have a look at this. Let me just pop these straps here. I'm going to talk firstly about these two external pouches here. For those of you that are regular views of my channel, you've probably got an idea in the, into at least what's in one of these. In this one here is my tarp. Does my tarp absorb water? No, because it's waterproof. If it did, it would be a really ill effective tarp. If that does get wet as I'm walking around and it's raining and it, and it soaks through the water repellency of the pouch, is it going to damage the tarp? No. Is it going to make the tarp less effective? No, because if it does get wet, as I'm putting it up, I will be shaking the water off it and it's going to be get it getting wet anyway if I'm putting it up in the rain. So that is not waterproof. It's not waterproof because it doesn't absorb water and it's not going to become less effective if it does. Not waterproofed. What else isn't waterproof? Let's pop the other pouch here. In here, just drop some hot chocolate sachets, is a black plastic British Army issue water bottle doesn't absorb water, right? It'd be, be the world's worst water bottle if it did. So that is already waterproof. So why waterproof it? My black metal mug doesn't absorb water. And if it did, it's not gonna become damaged or less effective. So it's not waterproofed. Also in here is the lid for that mug. Also in here 
is a wooden spoon. Does it absorb water? Yes, it does. Does it become less effective or damaged? No, it doesn't. And finally, a Millbank bag. Does it absorb water? Yes, it does. That's, that's the whole point. It's meant to be porous. Does it become less effective if it does though? No, it doesn't. So again, it's not waterproof. So there's a range of kit there. Um, uh, my tarp and the, and the, the, the cooking and eating and, and water vessel carrying and boiling kit there that is not waterproofed and why it's not waterproofed. Another piece of kit that I carry but do not waterproof is a waterproof jacket. Now it lives in the main compartment of my day sack but it sits on top of all my overtly waterproof gear. Does it absorb water? Well, it possibly does. It's a Gore-Tex jacket. It, it, it holds the moisture to a degree. Does it become any, any less effective if it does though? No. And primarily, if it's absolutely lashing down, if I get caught in a storm or a quick downpour, I want to be able to get to this A, quickly, and B, when I do get to it, I don't want to be, be exposing anything alongside it that may not be overtly waterproof or inherently waterproof whilst I get to it. So that lives inside my day sack, at the very top inside of my day sack, so that I can get to in a rush. But I do nothing specifically to waterproof that jacket. Let's take a look inside the inside top compartment of my day sack. For today, I'm carrying some insect repellent. It's already in a plastic container, so it's waterproof. Would it, if it were to get wet, then it could damage it. It could become too, too wet to apply. But I am confident that that is not going to get wet enough to the point where that's going to happen because it's in this hard plastic container. My fire lighting slash tinder box. This is different to most people's char cloth tins because it does not have a hole drilled in the top of it up or inserted into the top of it like many do. I'm not a fan of taking that approach. So this is already a waterproof, air, not airtight, but it's a waterproof tin. It's sealed with a black rubber band. So that's another piece of kit that I do not necessarily um, specially waterproof because the tin itself is water repellent. And finally, my head torch. Now, you could argue that if this were to get wet enough that it could well damage it, but um, it's never got wet enough. It's water repellent. Uh, the casing is water repellent. The battery compartment is part of the, the uh, casing of the light diode. So I'm happy that that in itself is waterproof slash water repellent. It doesn't live inside a separate waterproof um, bag or container of any types because it in itself is waterproof. It's water, got a waterproof rating. And that's the kit and equipment that I carry with me routinely that I do not go out of my way to apply any, fo any form of additional waterproofing or water repellency to. Either because it inherently already is, or if it were to get wet, it really doesn't matter, such as the black metal mug or the mill bank bag. So that's the kit I'm carrying that is not waterproof and hopefully you've seen how I've applied this methodology or this philosophy of if it gets wet but doesn't matter I'm okay with that. We've taken a look there at the kit that I carry that is not waterproof or that I do not go out of my way to apply any additional waterproofing to. Let's have a look at the kit that is left that I do overtly apply some waterproofing to. And let's think about that logic again. If I'm carrying kit that can absorb water and if it does, it becomes damaged or less effective, then I'm going to be thinking about waterproofing it. And the vast majority of that stuff lives in a canoe dry bag such as this. Now this is the size that I carry in my day sack. I have a much larger size that I carry in my Bergen. Now it doesn't really matter what's in here, although I'll give you an example of what's in here today. In here today is my hammock because it's of a material type that will absorb water and if it does I'm then laid on a wet hammock, that's no good. I'm also carrying in here um, a book 
a book clearly absorbs water and becomes damaged. And also in here is a very, very thin fleecy type top doubt I'm going to need it today. It's beautiful weather, but that's also carried in here. If I were doing an overnighter, my sleeping bag and roll mat, uh, inflatable mat would be in here. Um, possibly a, a spare top of some description to change into at the end of the day that were dry. Spare socks would be in here, spare underwear, anything that could absorb moisture and if it did would become less effective or damaged would go into a dry bag or a day sack liner of some description like this. Again, very, very small amount today because I am just out for the day with the kids and the dog. But it's that general principle that I want you to think about. Does it absorb water? If it does, will it damage it or will it become less effective when I need to use it? If the answer is yes, get it inside some form of waterproof liner. If the answer is no, then really consider whether you need to apply any overt or any extrinsic waterproofing to it. The final piece of kit that I carry that has some form of waterproofing to it, additional waterproofing to it, I carry in the top of my day sack and it's contained in this simple green rubberized plasticky bag, which is my first aid kit. The first aid pouch itself is not waterproof. It's of a canvas material, so it's not waterproof. It only has a Velcro enclosure, a, a, a Velcro fastening. So again, not waterproof. So I keep it all wrapped up inside that plastic bag. Why? Because canvas can absorb water. Bandages, plasters, things like that that are within this, can absorb water and if they do, they can become damaged or less effective. So it's that same principle. And I know I keep repeating this and I'm apologies if, I'm, if I've bored you with this, but it's that same principle that matters. It doesn't matter what's in this first aid kit. It doesn't matter what I'm carrying in here. The principle of if it can absorb moisture and become damaged or ill-effective, I waterproof it. If it can and doesn't, I don't, and it's that general principle that I think is worth taking away. If you yourself are just starting in to get into the outdoors and you're wondering what is it that you should be waterproofing, or even if you're seasoned at this, even if you're experienced at this, maybe there's an approach that I take that could offer you an alternative way about thinking about packing your kit. Now, I've not gone into a great deal of detail at all about the contents of my day sack as such. If you're interested in looking at that in more detail, if you check out the video that's appearing in this corner of the screen right now, I offer something of a detailed breakdown as to what I carry in my kit for an overnighter plus. Check that video out if you're interested. If not, I will see you in my next video very shortly and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Stay safe, folks.